business on all of that. Susan, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Sandra. There was quite a market sell-off today. Was it absolutely in part due to concerns? Oh yeah, with absolutely. China? And COVID, of course, yeah. and the supply chain that Jillian just mentioned. And we had Apple, of course, uh, being the largest stock in the S&P 500 yeah. in 40 years. And they, of course, have a large assembly plant in China. And they might be impacted by six million units of the top of the line iPhone 14 Pros. And you know, for a company that's worth two and a half trillion dollars, that's expected to sell about 90 million handsets over the holiday period, that's going to be a problem. But I really want to talk to you about the differential between the party and the people. Because if you've ever been to China, you know that the party, yes, is communist, but the people of China are very capitalist, meaning that they want to buy their iPhones, they want to wear their Nike sneakers and buy their Starbucks latte. And now there is an unspoken social contract in China where if the party, the Communist Party of China, keeps everyone employed and prosperous, then there are unspoken rules that the people will just, I guess they'll concentrate on buying the, their apartment and putting food on the table than actually going out in the streets to protest like this. But when you're talking about three years of lockdowns and two months of it, you heard about those stories in Shanghai yeah. where people didn't have access to food and water. I think that was too much for an economy of one billion when they saw other economies and other countries opening up and being able to travel and have their freedoms elsewhere. Really something over the weekend, the holiday weekend here to be watching scenes like that over there, Shanghai. That was Sunday, uh, Susan. There's obviously huge economic concerns, implications from these protests as they continue to emerge. You mentioned Apple, the yeah. impact that will have on a massive company like Apple. But what are you hearing are the global economic implications of all of this? Well, you know that supply chains are long and complex, and, and especially when you're a company the size of Apple trying to move 200 million handsets yeah. each and every year with virtually no inventory, that process to change and to move, say, from China to elsewhere in the world, that's going to take a long time. But it's not just Apple. Think about the Nikes that get 20 percent of their sales in China or Tesla, that Elon Musk has that, uh, that Shanghai factory, which is near the epicenter of the protest. Not only do they export across China through Shanghai, but they also export across Europe as well. So there are large implications for huge multinationals. Disney Shanghai, you heard about that $5 billion park that actually locked visitors inside until they could show a negative COVID test. So it's not just Apple, but I would say huge companies have a, a vested interest right now in China and probably looking at these pictures are, are rethinking what they're going to do with their supply chains and production. I mean, you look at the shutdowns, right? And then you look at the, 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 the protests that are emerging in the streets there and you have the concerns domestically here about yeah. us managing inflation and we look over there and that is perfect storm for a sell-off, which we saw today to start the week. Season. Yeah. And the world's second largest economy, as you know, when one part of the world sneezes or catches exactly. a cold, you know. Exactly. And the Fed has a huge task on their hands here at home. Susan, great to, great see, to you. see you. Thank you very much for all of that. The probe, meanwhile, into the